Right, on to the next part. I've brought some lenses to hopefully try and alleviate this focusing problem. So there's a lens fix now, it still jumps a bit, but it's a little bit better. But it's not perfect. Right, I'm going to be using these wheels, and I shall explain those in a second. But first off, wheel choices, you have this type. Right, Markets, Rumford, different names, same, same product. Um, these self-quarter, and I'll explain that later as well. Uh, this is the wrong type of axle, it's longer than it should be, but there's a little, it's like a, I can't really show you because of focus, it's like a little square end which fits into this. So you can only put it in. In quarter intervals. Okay, like I said this isn't, shouldn't be that long, it's for a different type, but just a demonstration it's fine. And they come in little nuts that you just simply screw on. If you don't have the proper tool, you can use a pair of tweezers. I did get by in the past, but it's better to just buy that proper Romford Market screwdriver. And it has the slots in it, so it's designed to just work. And that's it. Easy. You want to take the wheel off, you'll just undo it. Same for the crank pin, you can see the little grooves here. This is a shortened crank pin because I did use it in the past, but it's the same principle if you get it in that is. Okay. You just literally screw it in from the front. Um, in terms of fitting the actual crank pins and the coupling rods, I can show that later, but that's just to sort of demonstrate them. I've been re recently using these sort, which is Alan Gibson, quite popular. I think, personally, they look more realistic. I just prefer them. They're a little bit harder because you have to put them in with pressure. Now, I've been trying to get myself a wheel puller. I haven't found one yet. I know GW models do one, but I haven't managed to get a hold of them yet. So, all these years so far, I've just been basically getting on um, by hand. Uh, so, it's not necessarily the best way, but it still works. It's just getting them on and off adjustment. It can be a bit awkward. The way I fitted the axle, quite simple. Take your wheel, get the axle, get a pair of pliers and just push it in. Try and push it in squarely obviously. Be done. That's how I do it. If you think that's too much of a bodge, again, you know, find a wheel puller or presser and you can do things a bit more properly, but if you don't have it, you can get by doing just that. Let me just put this away. Didn't realise it escaped. If I sound a bit out of breath, it's because I am. I've just been doing some exercise. Right. Um, exactly the same for these wheels. Right. Now... Where is it? Okay, the bushes, or the bearings, you can fit onto this chassis. Get yourself some of this. Power bind data is six, or uh, half -ix. You don't have to, you can just use cheap bog standard super glue, but I find it's worth the extra money for this stuff. It sticks anything. When you get your chassis, just test fit them by hand first. You need to make sure that the, the lip goes on the outside. Like that just pushes in. I've made them so that they are either just a push fit or they're a bit too tight. Like you don't want it there yet, so we know that one fits, that's fine. Just prise it out gently. Or you could just stick a bit of super glue in as it is. I just prefer to stick it in a bit more solidly. Um, okay, and that one's a bit tight. So, what you do is, this is where you need that one eighth tape of rim I told you about. This one here. Very, very, very gently, 
Flipping the oil out. I mean very, very gently, just a teeniest little nick. You don't want it sloppy. That was him. Yep. Right. Yeah, and find out where it slots a pinch and just a gentlest little turn. Okay. So now I'll take them all out again. Now to put the glue on, get yourself a bit of scrap wire or rod. You can either put it on directly or stick it onto the desk. But the idea is you want to get a bit more control than just blobbing it on any old towel. And just rim it. Get on that. It's okay to have a little bit on the outside. Just look down at the length of it and make sure you put it in squarely. If you're wondering why I'm using a piece of glass as well, it's supposed to be uh, more straight than anything else, especially mirror glass, so when you're building a chassis, it helps. More so with etched chassis, because you sold them together, this is already printed, but it's just good practice. Right, the best thing to do now is to leave it for a good 5-10 minutes because in the past I've stick the axles in and find out that I've glued the axles to the bearings so just give that time for that reason I'm going to switch the camera off for a minute Okay, something I forgot to mention with these Markets Romford wheels the tyre, the wheel and the axle is all live Okay. Yeah, if you get a set of insulated ones in between the rim and the wheel, they'll be like a little brown, possibly made out of paper, just insulates it. So whenever you do a chassis, you need to make sure that one side is always insulated and one side is live, or both sides are insulated. Okay, that's something I forgot to tell you, and it's very important. These ones um, are insulated because the main wheel is plastic. Or maybe something similar. Okay, so I've prepared these. As I mentioned on the these wheels, you just screw the crank pin in from the front, put the coupling rod on, and solder a washer to it. Or if you get the deluxe ones, you screw the, the washer on. And again, I'll show that later. But with these ones, the Allen Gibsons, you notice at the top left you have a longer one. That only matters if you're going to build um, connecting rods and eccentric cranks and things like that. On the top right you have the retainers, bottom right you have um, the bush, and on the bottom left you have a crank pin. So the idea is a crank pin goes on, the bush goes on, the coupling rod goes on, and the retainer goes on. Okay, And these ones are different because they're going from the back. So I would normally spray paint my wheels but now, prime them, either mask your wheel or scrape the paint off afterwards. Um, but I hope you can see there's no hole. It's on the front. There's a small hole just there, and it has to be drilled out. So, I need to check the instructions and find out what size to use. One second. Number 6 to 1 to 80, we need 70. So, it's this box. When you put the top in, just give it a little spin to make sure you have it in the square. Because it can be a bit of a pain. 
Right, again, on the front there's a dimple, so it's not exactly hard. Just drill it as straight as you can. Don't press too hard. Okay, we'll be through. And it says to countersink it. If you want to get a proper countersink and do it properly, or get a bigger drill size and do what you can, I'll just bodge it with this. With a smaller one. Just literally put the blade in and just twist it a little bit. Not too much. Just make sure that head goes in. Let's say a little bit more. I have found as well when you put these on that you can sometimes drill them in the wrong angle so you have to be careful. I would normally put these on before the axles as well but I forgot. Get a bigger, bigger screwdriver. The reason the instructions say to use this particular size is it self taps, so it's going to have some resistance, but not too much. No trouble getting it in. Now that there is almost flush now. That's that's the reason for countersinking it. That won't catch on anything now. Now again, now it's in. Check it because if you can see that, it looks a little bent, just a wee bit. Find a bit of finger pressure. Just teasing it here and there. Sometimes is all you need to sort it. Another thing I found is sometimes they can undo themselves, so a little blob of super glue, or maybe paint will be better because paint, paint isn't quite as permanent, but it does gum it up slightly. I'm going to risk it on this one and go for the super glue. It's just a teeniest blob. Right. One. 